Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and we're here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about speech compression and how to set it up on your radio. And as usual, when demonstrating things, I'll do it on the reference station radio, which is the ICOM 7300. Now, don't worry, a lot of the other radios do exactly the same thing in just a slightly different way. It'll be in your owner's manual. Now, I note that a lot of radios today come with a thin, basic manual, and they don't cover every function of the radio. So, you may have to look either in something you download or on a CD given to you by the manufacturer for the full manual. Now, you can print that like I did right here. I printed this in color. We have a home color printer and took it down to Office Depot and had it spiral bound with a black rear cover and a clear front cover. And I said, this is a really good thing to do to get an operating manual. It's the full manual. The problem is I had a lot of people tell me that when they took the file down to Office Depot to be printed and punched and bound, it was like 80 bucks. Oh my goodness. Maybe you'd better just use it on your computer, you know. You don't refer to it all the time. I'd spend quite a bit of time with it when you're new with your radio, but otherwise I personally like a hard copy, so it's a little bit easier. So what's speech compression? The normal speech signal consists of a lot of peaks. The peaks come on the plosives and the blowsives and things like that. Or sometime you accentuate a particular word, you'll cause the speech level to go up. But in normal use, the speech level is fairly low. So it gets a little harder and harder to hear. Now, this video coming to you has had its audio compressed for exactly the same reason. We use the facility in Audacity called compression. Now before we do that we also look at a number of other factors before we get the speech set up for compression. Now in the radio, in your radio, this is a transmit function, okay, we talked about the audio going into the, the microphone, holding the mic in the correct position, and speaking in a voice that can be heard, a constant voice, I suggest you use your outdoor voice, which would be what, you, if you were sitting out on the porch and the kids are playing, you know, the voice you have to use with each other to be heard over the wind and things like that. Uh, because that gives the radio quite a bit to work with. We talked about how then you set the mic gain so you do not push the ALC or automatic level control outside of its proper range. Okay, so that gets the mic gain set up. You can transmit from there. But to put a little punch in your voice, what you want to do is set up the speech compression so that the lows in the speech, and I'm not talking about low frequency, I'm talking about low volume, so the low volumes are expanded and the tops are brought down. Someone who's an audiophile and really understands how these things work can tell that your audio is compressed. Too many people overcompress. And the problem with that is that it sounds really bad at the other end. It's difficult to receive. What we're going to do is set up the compression in such a way that nobody unless they're really listening extremely carefully, can even tell that you're doing compression. But it gives your signal punch. And, and in fact, you can measure that. The average single sideband signal, it runs about 20% of the amount of power of the radio. In other words, if you were to average all of your speech on a 100-watt radio, you'd see about 20 watts going out. With compression, you can pick that up to about 40 watts. So it's like gaining 3 dB, or like taking a 100-watt radio and turning it into a 200-watt radio. 
And it really helps when you're trying to get through to DX or contest station or somebody you want to talk to and in band conditions are just difficult. The compression can really help with that. Now, I leave my compressor on all the time. That way I sound consistent to everybody I talk to. So let's look. It devotes a whole page to setting the speech compressor. Let's take a look at what we need to do here. And this is in single sideband mode where it makes the most sense. Okay, the speech compressor increases the average RF out power, improving readability at the receiving station. This function compresses the transmitter audio input to increase the average audio output level. Now you can see where this would go bonkers if you do it too much. Okay, select sideband, push function. Now function's down here. Okay, and be sure that the speech compressor is off. Okay, that turned it off. If the speech compressor is on, touch it to turn it off. Touch exit. This little arrow thing is exit. Touch the full function, multifunction meter to display the ALC meter. Now this assumes that you've set your microphone already properly. I'm just going to use this right here where it shows ALC and compression. Okay, touch the multifunction meter to display the ALC meter, which is right there. ALC goes up there, and much of the time it's over there. Let's uh, take a look here. Now, adjust the mic gain to where the ALC meets within the 30 to 50 percent range of the ALC zone. Okay, so it's at, up at the 50 percent gain. Touch the multifunction meter again to display the comp meter. Okay, we're looking at the comp meter. Notice nothing is happening here because speech compression is off. Now, uh, we're going to do function, compressor, okay, back, and now we're going to take a look at this. Open the function screen, touch comp and turn it on. We did that. Touch comp for one second. So let's go to the menu and the function screen. Touch comp for one second while speaking into the microphone at your normal voice. Adjust the speech compressor level to where the comp meter reads within the comp zone of 10 to 20 dB. Okay, uh, adjust the compression here so that the range of it is in the comp zone, which is 10 to 20 dB. We've got a 10 and 20. So if we were to do hello CQ, CQ, CQ. Okay, so over here we're looking at the average power out. It goes up to about 50. Let's turn the compressor off. The average power out is much less, okay? And so what we do is we turn that compressor on, turn that compressor on, and you see it appears to be a much stronger signal, okay? So what we've done here is we've taken a look at the manual for this radio and followed the steps step by step to set compression on. Now, if you listen to this radio, you will find that it doesn't sound much different if I have the compressor off. And yet we've seen we almost double the average output power from 20 to 40 percent. We say that the duty cycle has been doubled from 20 percent to 40 percent. Now, of course, it's still a 100 watt radio, so it'll max out at 100 watts. But the radio circuitry takes care of that. Now, every radio that has a speech compressor, and all the modern radios have them, has a method for setting it. It is so tempting to turn up the compression higher, thinking that you'll get more signal punch. You won't. What you'll get is more junk on the output signal. It will sound distorted. It also will splatter, meaning that it will transmit sounds outside the frequency it should, and they will become an input, a noise input, to other radios on nearby frequencies. If it's set up properly, you will find that if someone is listening to you and you turn the speech compressor on and off to see how well you do, you will find that the voice will sound 
about the same, but it will be much punchier. It will get through further. It's like adding a 200 watt amplifier to your radio. It's a, a very cool way of doing things. If you have a compressor in your radio, and you almost certainly do, use it, but be very careful how you set it so that the signal coming out is clean. This is right here, the setting that causes the most problems with dirty signals uh, getting out on the air. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.